Hi and welcome to my channel, my name is Magnus and today we're going to talk about how to change the number of SND cores on a VSX. So if you didn't already know, the SND cores are the one that is handling the traffic on the NICs themselves. So if we go down and check here in the best practice guide and this is SK98348. And then we start to check with multi-queuing. So if you check here under multi-queuing, here we can see it's writing about SND. And this is the, the CPU core that is processing or responsible for processing incoming traffic from the network interface. Accelerating traffic if Secure Excel is enabled and also to distribute the, the traffic alongst the firewall kernels. So the SND are the ones that will handle the traffic first. And if you have a system with a lot of CPUs and a lot of cores, it's important to like take a certain amount of them and put on the network interface cards because one CPU core can maximum handle about three gig, 3.5 gigs. After that, you need to enable multi-queuing. And if you enable multi-queuing, you should only use the SND cores. And by default, two cores on an eight core license are assigned as SND cores and the rest is used for firewall kernels. Just keep in mind, if you assign something for SND cores, you shouldn't use them to process traffic with like IPS and the bot or anything like that, meaning they should not be combined between like handling traffic and also to handling uh, firewall kernel stuff. And this is also listed under the recommendation in this guide under core Excel. So it says here, it's not recommended for the SND and Core Excel firewall instance to share the same CPU core. Of course, if, if, if you have specific cases, yes, it can be needed. If you have too few cores, you need to share them. But if you have like eight cores, 12 cores, 24 cores, or even more, you shouldn't share the cores between the SND and the, and the Core Excel cores. And if you're running normal checkpoint appliances and not VSX. This is something that can be automatically balanced if you're running R8040 or R81 with a function called dynamic balancing of Core Excel. And you can see you can see this in the SK164155. But you see here that it's a lot of requirements and it's not supported to have it in VSX mode. So with VSX comes a lot of nice features, but it also comes drawbacks. And this is one of them. So you actually need to change this yourself. So if we log into a checkpoint VSX and we check like which cores are assigned to a multi-queuing, we can see here that core zero and core one is assigned to the multi-queuing. And this is running R8030 with a 3.10 kernel, meaning multi-queuing is enabled by default. But we want to change this. So you can do this by running firewall CTL infinity minus S minus D and minus firewall kernel. And then select the number of kernels that you want to handle. Well, firewall kernel. Um, wait, I just mistyped. Um, so we need to put We have here, set all firewall kernels affinity. Ah, so we, have, we need to have minus FVK all and the number of the CPUs. Meaning this specific box, it has 16 cores and we want to assign four cores for a multi-queuing because I want to manage a lot of traffic and I don't use so many blades. And this way we need to put 12 then you have 16 minus 4 is 4 for the multi queuing. So we just put minus and then this should work. So you see here now that the, um, the number of cores has been set successfully. So you see 3, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15 has been changed successfully. You need to reboot the, the, the box for this to take effect. So let's check when this is back up. So you can see here that we have our 16 cores and four cores are allocated to multi-queuing. And keep in mind, one core equals about 
USB 3.5 gigs of traffic. So four cores should allow us to press maybe 12, 15 gigs of traffic. Um, and, and then they still need to be processed by the firewall kernel. So if you're using like IPS application control, maybe this is the incorrect set for you, but I have a lot of traffic that is only going through, well, the fast path. And if you don't know about the fast path, maybe we can do a video about this, but more or less it's how much processes should be involved in handling the traffic. If it's fast path, medium path or, or whatever, there are a few, there are a few different paths, and in R8030 or 40, they have introduced a lot more. Before it was uh, slow, medium, and fast. Now there are like, I don't know, seven or 10 or something like that. It's, it's a lot more. And you also see here that I have it set for auto. Uh, you can, of course, put it in manually. I don't recommend you put it in manual if you don't know what you're doing. And everything that you put in manually, you need to make sure to keep when you're upgrading. So this is something that you need to recheck when you have done an upgrade. And you can also see here which type of cores are assigned for the specific interface. Meaning you can put manually like, yeah, this uh, Ethernet should use this specific cores or this specific VS should use this specific cores if you really want to tweak it. And this can be good if you want to guarantee like specific, well, performance to a VS. And this is something that we will talk about in a later video. But for now, just keep it auto. Just make sure to have like your SND course and your firewall kernel course separately. And just to show you, you can set this manually. But if you do it in the wrong order, meaning you try to set the, the course, you see here that you can actually put in minus S manually and then minus C and specify which CPU cores that you should use for this one. If you just put in like zero to one, and then we will take a different number here, meaning um, like eight to nine, just to have it different. And these ones are not SNDs. So you see here using, you see that you get an alert that it's not an SND and using a non SND core for multi queuing is not recommended. So you actually get prompted in the CLI if you do it this the wrong way. So again, if you want to change this the right way, you should have the firewall CTL affinity minus S minus D minus FWK all and then put the number of CPUs that you want to allocate as firewall workers and the rest of them will be SND cores. And as you see, when you're doing like this, it's just asking for the number of CPUs. It doesn't say which cores would you want to have for this specific task. So there are ways that you can do it, but still, I recommend you doing it this way and just keep it auto, just keep it simple. Don't try to overcomplicate things. I mean, if you have worked with VSX for a long time, if you really want to do like core allocation for specific VSS, for specific functions, for specific interfaces, well, you can do that, but that will be a different video. And I don't think that many people is actually using that except maybe Kashbash. He had made a good guide for this in the Checkpoint community. So if you want to check this out, just check out Kashbash post and how to do VSX tweaking when you have a lot of cores. I mean, I only have 16 cores in this box, so I don't really have so much playroom as uh, someone with like a chassis with like 64 cores or the fattest box uh, that you can think about that you have 48 cores and then hyper threading or whatever. I only have 16 cores, so four SND cores and 12 firewall workers. I think that will just be fine for me. So I think this is it. Please like and share the video. If you want to see more of this like CLI or performance tweaking when it comes to checkpoint, please let me know in the comment below and I hope to see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.